Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another very interesting topic we are going to talk about. Something that a lot of footballers have been touching on lately, the fact that the fixture schedule is just too crazy. It looks like um, they are suffering, they are struggling and there are a few thoughts about this um, from fans and footballers alike. So let's get into it. This comes off the back of in Rodri, who has been a major, you know, proponent of footballers having uh, less hectic schedules, actually getting injured in the last match against Arsenal. And it looks like he's kind of been vindicated in the sense that, look, um, these organizations, FIFA and UEFA, are going to run footballers to the ground. It's a revenue issue for them. These companies want to maximize revenue from these players as much as possible. More tournaments means more tickets sold, means more subscriptions for when, you know, TV services and stuff like that also, you know, claimed by these companies. Stadiums get revenue, the organizations get revenue. And as at the expense of players, salaries aren't increasing. They're still getting the same amounts of money they were getting if they were playing, you know, just once a week or twice a week. But year-round players are just, you know, playing match after match after match. And then, and then after that, you have, you know, tournaments at the end of the season where it used to be maybe once or, or twice every four years. Now, especially with the introduction of the new Club World Cup and the new formats, it looks like it's going to be just one season and four where players actually get a summer break. And it's an interesting one for me because there are two sides of an, an argument here. First of all, that footballers are paid an immense amount of money. So they essentially deserve this, you know, work for your money. People earn way less and work way more. Um, but as athletes, you know, my response to that would be as athletes, um, the regular nine to five worker doesn't put their body through the same exertions that, um, you know, physical athletes do. Um, outside of the game weeks, you know, there's the work and the amount of work done in the gym. And it will also impact the ability to do that if they are playing every you know other day every couple of days um they barely have any time to work in the gym to work at home um and on the training ground and let their bodies recover and all of that so it's a very packed and, and tight schedule other people are saying that that's why teams have the size of squads they have but to be able to compete on all of those fronts teams are going to have to play some players as regular starters because if you want to also look at the, the way these leagues are set up, it doesn't allow teams to have more than a certain amount of players in their squad. I think the Premier League is like 26. Um, and out of that, you only have like, you know, a certain number on the bench. You're only allowed a certain number of substitutions per game. Um, and so, yeah, it gets a little bit murky. The Champions League 2 are trying, you know, these new formats where for the first time ever, we've had Champions League games being played on a, th on a Thursday. So teams have to play on a Thursday and then go back and play on a Saturday and then the fixture schedules too are all messed up. So I think, honestly, I think I didn't mind it when it's done a little bit. I mean, I, I think we saw the peak or I think we saw the max that could possibly be stretched out um, maybe last season or last couple of seasons where you have, you know, an AFCON in there or a Euros tournament in the Nations League like this is absolutely bogus. We don't need the Nations League. And this new format of the Club World Cup, I've been saying for a while now, like, why change something that's broken? That's not broken, sorry. The Champions League was fine. The Club World Cup was fine. Nobody was complaining that we need more matches or we need more games. I think we have enough football to watch. And if throughout the year, literally, we go without football for only two months of the year, July, August, you know, in fact, them, June, July, because the league starts in August most times. And before that too, we have preseason. So literally, I think we only start for football for a month and a half at most. I don't see why, you know, these teams and these um, clubs and these tournaments need to be played time and time and time and time and time again. And if it means like what has happened to Rodri players essentially getting injured for large extents of the season, because they play at a high level. They play at a high level. They can't afford to, you know, put in half a shift, especially if, you know, it means that they're going to lose out on certain games where, you know, um, victory and defeat, the fine margin between victory and defeat up, you know, putting that putting in that extra shift. So for a player like Rodri, who is a very physical player, you know, he needs to do this kind of running. And to see him suffer an injury, you know, a useless injury. We've seen Kevin De Bruyne suffer a few injuries in these last couple of years. Rhys James, even though he's always injured, yeah, I mean, he is getting injured. You know, these are some of the best players in the world that we are missing out on. And then it kind of masks the products, right? Because you don't get the very best playing at the top, you know, week in, week out consistently. And then it kind of, to me, it kind of masks the product and it makes it a little bit, um, 
it makes it pointless to have all of these matches and not having you know the best players being able to play in these tournaments um it's kind of heartbreaking to be honest last and we've seen a ton of teams suffering a ton of injury problems and i'd say it, it pretty much stems from you know these fixture schedules we had the world cup being played smack dab in the middle of a season a couple of year, years ago that didn't help and then after that we saw the euros last summer that didn't help um, this season we are going to see the club world cup you know being played out that didn't help and then you know it seems like newcastle will have eight injuries last season chelsea had like 12 injuries all throughout the season we rarely ever were able to field a, a proper starting 11 to compete city are going to miss out on some key players in the run in this season arsenal missed out on a couple of you know key players a couple of seasons um, in a back-to-back in a row liverpool the same who remembers the europa league final where they literally had to play their academy they still won though but you know come on like united even united who you know always get you know a lot of stick even they had you know massive injury worries in their side um all of last season so it, it really is you know marring the products that's you know these competitions are trying to sell uefa and i think it will really come to a head at some point where the players may or may not want to play these matches and that will influence and impact you know some teams being able to make you know some transfers and the bargaining power these players will have will mean that some teams may decide not to compete in these tournaments anymore i'm pretty sure we will have a season where some teams will just decide that they're not taking part in the europa league this season or in the you know, conference league this season, or they'll pull out of the, the Club World Cup. And then now, you know, these tournaments are going to be scrambling to get replacements because they want these teams in their tournaments. Like, it's why, it's how they're able to sell their products in their tournaments. And it will make calls for the Europa Super League. Um, the, the the Super League, I said Europa, sorry. The Super League, it will make calls for the Super League even more strong from these clubs because essentially they will feel like they are being subjected to harsh conditions by these governing bodies. And in the Super League, they can detect, detect how they play, when they play, and how often they play. And they'll make the argument that, you know, we have the best players in the world, and so we will keep them fresh and we'll keep them active for your benefits. And yeah, it will just, it will just make it a, a lot more, you know, it will give it a lot more legitimacy in that sense because i mean the injuries are just getting too much and it's kind of like poetic and ironic in a, in a sense that rodri did say that look it will get to a point where players are going to go on strike players are going to go on strike if this keeps up because they, they can't keep doing this week in week outs and you know he's injured it's happening he's, he's injured you know and you know the more players get injured the more players will be like no we can't have this enough is enough so honestly i think i think they do deserve a break like Every single work in the world. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, you get time off. You get time off. Look, footballers get paid a ton of money. It's not because, you know, they're expected to work 10 times the amount of time you are. These are the best people in the world. They're the best in their field. Anybody in the best in their field will earn a ton of money. If you were the best software developer in the world, you are going to earn a ton of money. If you were the best, whatever, you're going to earn a ton of money. Coupled with the fact that it's very hard to be an elite footballer and they put their bodies through a ton. So I don't think the paycheck justifies, you know, subjecting them to to, abs- to borderline abuse, right? And then coupled with the fact that, you know, they don't get bricks. Even, you know, even the, the, the lowest, you know, worker in the world has bricks. They, they play all through Christmas. They have a couple of months off in the summer and people think that, you know, they are being pampered. I, uh, honestly, I don't get fans, football fans sometimes. You know, you should be looking out for the interest of the players. I've never seen a player that has said that, oh, I don't want to play, like, you know, diva-ish. They are not charging you the money, by the way. They are not collecting your money. You are paying the organizations. You are paying Sky Sports. You are paying DSTV. You are paying the Premier League to, to you know, access to, you know, watch these players. They will play for you for free if they could. So imagine the money was coming straight into their pockets because they are doing all the work. So, yeah, I think it's very sad, honestly. I think it's very sad. I think... Um, it will become worse before it becomes better. But I think ultimately, stuff like this will mean that they will be there. There, there will be a shift coming soon because it will only take you know the likes of an Mbappe getting hit and you know um, a Rodri getting hit um, and a Haaland getting hit. You know the very best players in the world, Vinicius, Bellingham. Even Bellingham is injured right now. It will take that to then you know make you know, players and, and organizations and say, okay, we can't keep on doing this. Let's try and restructure. 
how we put these players to work and let's try and get a, a better outcome for everybody because yeah it's 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 terrible. We saw a very bad Euros tournament because of that. You know, players aren't playing at their peak. Players aren't playing at their best because they are trying to prevent injuries or they are coming back from injuries or they are playing with injuries, you know. But yeah. Anyways, guys, I've talked on for long enough. Do let me know what you think, though. Do you think I am being a little bit too harsh? Do you think the players are and um, are being a little bit too prima donna-ish? Do you think they are being divas? Do you think they should be playing more? Do you think they don't have any rights to complain? Please let me know in the comments below. Um, and also if you've enjoyed today's video you found it useful please consider leaving a like or subscribing to our youtube channel telecom asia sports we have a ton more content on our channel so please be sure to check it out also consider checking out our website telecomasia.net we have a ton of sports opinions sports news sports coverage football betting tips all of that good stuff so do consider checking us out there as well thanks so much for watching guys and i'll see you guys in the next one bye for now